on Monday. They want our website graphics. So I was on his blog last week. Actually, Rob uses they, them pronouns now. Do they? That's cool. Right. So I was on their blog, and it became easy. At Thanksgiving in 2015, my sister brought her new boyfriend to stay with me and my parents for the first time. Amelia Quarry. He is an engineer at JPL, owner of many Hawaiian shirts, lover of camping and dogs. Amila is the first person I've watched take testosterone. So your period stopped months ago. Wow, amazing. So why do you identify as non-binary rather than as a trans man? Because really, I want people to be confused about my gender at all times. I don't want a beard, and I don't want my voice to change. I don't want more gendered traits. I want less. If tea magically makes you grow a dick, though, I'll let you know. A few months after breaking up with Z, I pondered reopening Tinder. I don't regret trying out the whole dating romance thing because now I have some context for what people talk about all the time. Do I want to try out romantic emotional commitment with someone else? Honestly? No. But I never figured out how to end my fan fiction. Hmm. Hey Ashley, would you please write all of the sex scenes for my fic? Obviously I credit you as co-author on AO3 and owe you internal gratitude. I've been waiting for you to ask. I have several thousand words written already. I'm emailing them to you now. Oh my god, I'm so excited to read them. Thank you, thank you. Ah, perfect. Problem solved. Delete Tinder? Yes. I remember when I first realized I never had to have children. It was like walking out of a narrow alley into a wide open field. I never have to get married. I never have to date anyone. I don't even have to care about sex. These realizations were like gifts that I gave to myself. There's a photo of me at about age four posting with, kitten, with a kitten, unaware or uncaring that my mermaid undies are also on display. By first grade, I had switched from girl underwear to soft cotton shorts. My mom called these bike shirts, shorts and bought them for me without comment. When I started my period, I quickly realized that pads and shorts were not compatible. Which six pack do I hate the least? Very reluctantly, I returned to the girls section. I bought essentially the exact same ones for 15 years. I'd pull out the inevitable pink and purple pairs and give them to Phoebe, keeping only the dark neutral colors for myself. Where are you, Hanes, cotton bikini cut six pack? It's not here. Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. What, what? They don't have any of the plain underwear. Everything has lace on it. What do I do? Help me. Do you want to look in the boys section? Yes, wait, is that an option? Will anything fit me? Amelia gets his there. Wow. There you go. Wow. These have dinosaurs. These have spaceships. These have comics on them. But will they fit me? Will I be comfortable? We'll rip open a pack in the dressing room and you can try them on over your own, your other underwear, okay? So how do you feel? They feel good. No, they feel great. When I get, got home, it seemed like a small miracle. Six pairs of underwear in a pack and not one of them was pink. Why did I waste so many years buying underwear that I hated? I could have been buying cute, nerdy briefs this whole time. How could I help support a young person who came to me with the same feelings I have about gender? Reading The Gender Creative Child by Diane Ernsaft. Obviously, I would listen and believe them. I'd ask if they wanted to do something, some level of social transition. If the kid hadn't hit puberty yet, I'd say try hormone blockers, but it's too late for me for the, too late for that for me, sadly. I already have short hair, and I've been wearing non-gender specific clothes for years. I don't want to change my name, but I like the idea of changing pronouns. Female pronouns feel less and less accurate lately when I hear them used for me. But what would feel accurate? He, him, his, they, them, theirs, he or they, he or they. What am I? I first met Jaina B. at Gellin's family annual New Year's Eve party in 2003 when I was 14. Jaina B. is a writer, a zine maker and collector of ephemera, owner of an art house and SF Granny University of the Imagination, the first person I ever met who'd won NaNoWriMo. What is NaNoWriMo? National Novel Writing Month. You try to write a whole 50,000 word book in 30 days. What? You've done that? More than once. 50,000 words in one month? My mind reeled. Jana and I lost touch with each other and only reconnected at the New Year's Eve party in 2015. What have you been up to for the past decade? I've been ordained as a pagan priest and identify as non-binary now. 
Wow, me too. Tell me more. For me, female presentation has always been a performance, a fun performance with sequins, glitter, and wild hair. But for a lot of my life, I felt like a drag queen in a female body. That makes perfect sense. I've been thinking about switching to they, them pronouns for some reason that just doesn't feel quite right. What pronouns do you use? I use the Spivak pronouns, E, M, ear, as in ask um what e wants in ear t. M, E, M, ear. I love those pronouns. I just got the biggest tingle down my spine. That's what my reaction to. That was my reaction to. Asking people to start using new pronouns for me seems like such a huge request, though. I know people will mess up, and what do I do? If I correct someone, will they get mad? I'd love to use these pronouns, but I don't want to inconvenience people. So instead of asking people to do something to make you feel more comfortable, you'd rather just feel a little uncomfortable all the time? You'd rather internalize and carry that discomfort every time someone who loves you misgenders you? Well, when you put it that way... As I pondered a pronoun change, I began to think of gender less as a scale and more as a landscape. Some people are born in the mountains while others are born by the sea. Some people are happy to live in the place they were born while others must make a journey to reach the climate in which they can flourish and grow. Between the ocean and the mountains is a wild forest. That is where I want to make my home. Winter, 2016. Does anyone want to trade brick for wheat? Sorry, no. Michael, my closest in-age cousin. My Aunt Sherry, who came out as lesbian feminist before I was born. Nope. Your turn. Thanks. Um, so what do you two think would happen if I asked my family to use different pronouns for me? What pronouns would you want? My favorite are E, M, ear. But I realize those sound like made-up words. Everyone in this family loves and supports you, so I'm sure they'll give it their best effort. But we will also mess up a lot. What's more important, people changing the words they use for you or changing how they think about you? If people could just switch to thinking of me as gender non-binary, that would be amazing. But the only way I can think of to initiate switch in thinking is to start with a switch of words. If you ask me to start using new pronouns for you, of course I will, but I'd like you to explain why. Right now I don't understand, and I'm going to keep asking until I do. What if I'm never able to explain, but I can tell you that it would make me happy? Would that be reason enough? Your happiness is very important to me, but I have a hard time seeing this trend of FTM, trans and genderqueer young people, as something other than a kind of misogyny, a deeply internalized hatred of women. I don't, I don't know how to explain. That's, that's not what it is. This conversation lasted until past 1 a.m. When I was finally getting ready to go, are you sure you don't want to stay here? I'd rather you didn't drive so late. I'll be fine. Well, I know you are a grown woman, but be careful. Or, I mean, you are a grown-up person. Sorry. Yes, thank you. As I drove home. That went pretty well, but there were a lot of points I never finished making. Will I ever feel like I've completely explained myself? At home, I tossed and turned over Sherry's misogyny comment. What if she's right? Our society's treatment of women is so toxic. Have I just been brainwashed into hating parts of myself? But no. I know that isn't true. I've spent my whole life not feeling male or female. I've always wanted a third option. But why am I feeling this? Sometimes I feel like my sexuality is broken and my gender is broken. I feel like there are these wires in my brain which were supposed to connect body to gender identity and sexuality, but they've all been twisted into a huge snarled mess. I confided this feeling into a long-distance friend. Sometimes I feel like my brain is a machine built by someone who lost the instruction manual. I feel that way sometimes, too. You should check out a book that my aunt wrote called Touching a Nerve, Self is Brain. When I read it, I was fascinated and weirdly relieved. Hope you will be, too. Patricia Churchland, PhB, is an analytical philosopher noted for her invention of her neurophilosophy. Her credentials include Professor Emeritus at UC San Diego, adjunct professor at Salk Institute of Biological Studies, recipient of a MacArthur Fellowship, fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. In 2013, she published Touching a Nerve, which explodes the questions, where in the physical structures of the brain are morality, empathy, aggression, free will, and identity based? Reading Churchland is like listening to an engaging university lecture. Normally, when a sperm fertilizes an egg, the resulting human con conceptus has 23 pairs of chromosomes. 
either XX genetic female or XY genetic male. However, 1 in 650 is born with XXY, Knefflitter syndrome. 1 in 1000 is born XYY. 1 in 5000 born solo X, Turner syndrome. 1 in 20,000 born with XXYY. Churchland, page 138 in U.S. National Library of Medicine Genetics Home Reference. In the early stages of development, the sex organs, gonads, of the fetus are neutral, but during the second month of fetal development, genes on the Y chromosome produce proteins that transform neutral gonads into male testes. Absent this action, the gonads grow into ovaries. Testosterone produced by the fetal testes is released into the bloodstream and enters the growing brain. Small but important correction, once it passes from the blood into the brain, some testosterone is transformed by an enzyme into a more potent androgenin, dihydrotestosterone, and some of that is changed into estrogel, which goes on to masculinize the brain. Paradoxical though it may seem, some estrogel is a female hormone is crucial to the masculinizing pro development of biology. It's, it's funny that way. It's hard to read. Finally, the masculinizing of the gonads making testes, penis, and prostate occur before the masculinizing of the brain. Sometimes the masculinizing of the brain does not follow the typical path and may be incomplete in various ways. You could have male genitalia and a female brain. Testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, estrogen, estrodial, estro, estradiol, androgenin receptors, genes, chromosomes, once we know something about the many factors, genetic and otherwise, that can alter the degree to which a brain is masculinized, it's a little easier to grasp a biological explanation for how a person might feel a disconnect between his or her gonads and his or her identity. A huge part of who I am is due to the suite of hormones and neurochemicals present in my womb as my cells developed. So Lady Gaga was right. I was born this way. What a relief. In the summer of 2016, I tabled at the Queer Comics Expo in San Francisco. This is probably the safest place in the entire world to debut new pronouns. I just have to figure out how to bring it up. Later, I found Scout Trans Pronoun Patches at the De Degenderetti booth. They, them, em, er, she, her, er, he, him. Wow, you have Spivak. What kind of joint would this be if we didn't stock the rare ones? I had to sit with the patch in my hand for 20 minutes before I was able to put it on. Why is this so difficult? Surrounded by queer cartoonists in all directions. Later, while wearing it, Maya is the queen of cross-hatching. Say something, say something, say something. How do I correct someone's compliment without sounding like an asshole? Well, now that it's too late anyway, the conversation has moved on. Shortly after an art shortly after at an art opening, do you know Maya? She graduated in 2015. E graduated. A person I was trying to network with, someone I knew in undergrad, wearing my pronoun patch. She draws comics. E draws comics. She has a master's degree, but no courage, apparently. I found myself turning to metaphors of mild physical pain as I tried to articulate why I wanted new pronouns. Female pronouns don't bother, didn't bother me when I was younger, but now they do. I know switching isn't easy, but please try. Getting called she feels like discovering a rock stuck in my shoe, or getting scratched by the tag at the back of my shirt. A small spike of solvable discomfort. Where are the scissors? Also in 2016, Ashley and I were invited to sign at a publisher's booth at Comic Con for the first time, getting things set up. You ladies are missing your name tags. I'll get them for you. Oh no, I didn't tell them anything about my pronouns. Here you go. Say something, say something. Uh, thank you. It happened again. Do you ladies need anything? No, thank you. Why didn't I say something the first time? It happened a third time. So glad you ladies could be here. Will I ever be able to stand up for myself? I hate being called ladies. Me too. Why didn't you say anything? At first it was because I didn't want to seem rude, and then after I didn't speak up the first time, it felt like I'd given up my right to say anything. This always happens. I just freeze and I can't make myself speak up. I just don't know how to explain myself. Make a comic about it. Phoebe and Amila came to stay in winter 2016 on Christmas Eve. We have a present we wanted you to open before tomorrow. Wow, a binder. Wait, two binders. Thank you. Thank you. In January, I wore a binder for the first time. It feels very good to wear it, but it also feels very good to take it off. Itchy. Wearing a binder for too long makes me feel like I need to shed out of my skin. 
As seniors in high school, I remember all of my classmates planning what tattoos they wanted as soon as they turned 18. 